So today we're going to see if the Vega architecture still holds up in 2022. Now let me preface this and say don't buy this card um, no matter how cheap it is. It, it is quite obsolete now. The drivers for this thing were so bad. Like, like you thought RDNA had bad drivers? This thing takes the cake, man, the Radeon 7. Um, I'm pretty sure AMD has completely stopped support of this, of this product here. You'll see what I mean later on in the video, but man, like, even at $400, like, if it wasn't for the content, I would be quite upset. Now, the last time we took a look at an HBM card, we looked at the Titan Volta. Now, that one had three enabled HBM chips. This one has four enabled ones, which obviously makes it very good at crypto mining. I wouldn't be buying this card for mining right now either. Now, I got this one for $400 shipped, and it came with the water block pre-installed, right? Now... Okay, there's a couple of points with that. One, if you are a, if you are an enthusiast and you buy a water block for a graphics card, keep the stock cooler. You can sell it for more if you keep the stock cooler. So this guy didn't keep the stock cooler. He didn't keep the box. It was dirt cheap because nobody buys water blocked cards. I just it works out for me in content because I like to water block them anyway, right? Again, don't go and buy one today. This is more just for scientific funsies right so at the time when it launched it was being compared to a 2080 slash 1080 ti at the time because the vega 64 kind of fell short right at like the base 1080 non-ti level right and then the radeon 7 came out after with the first seven nanometer node that came out and then this kind of pushed it over to the top right where that 2080 slash 1080 Ti level was. So then what we'll do, I don't have a 2080, but I do have a 2080 Super, pretty much the same thing, right? We'll take this, we'll benchmark it against the 2080 Super and the 6700 XT, and then we'll see, hey, maybe for $400, if it beats a 2080 Super, 2080 Supers are around $400 too. Once again, do not go out and buy this card. Radeon 7s are very good at mining. They were heavily, heavily mined on, which in itself isn't bad, but I just, I've heard that the stock cooler for these cards were so bad that the, the HBM was kind of failing on them, right? Because they've been mined on too hard. It's an HBM problem. Don't worry about buying 3000 series cards, right? Um, but that being said, the reason why I was okay buying this one was because it had a water block on it, right? So very rarely will miners buy cards and put water blocks on them. So I know a gamer had this one, right? And it came with a water block already on it. And even if it was mined on, mining on a water blocks card means it will literally last forever. So I know I'm good there. This card was also the fastest one, I believe, to go end of life. Like, the 5700 XT came out months after this thing, right? So, and they pretty much performed the same, right? So there's really no point in keeping this thing around. Far too expensive to make, and they were making no money on them. That's why you don't see HBM cards anymore. HBM, even to this day, is very, very, very expensive. That's why Nvidia and all these other companies are trying to find Infinity Cash, uh, Gamer Cash, GDDR6X. They're trying to find all these methods to kind of circumvent needing to go to HBM to solve the bandwidth problem. And to their credit, they have, honestly. You'll only find HBM now where they need power reduction because HBM still is the best for low power scenarios, servers, workstation, things where power draw really matters, right? But for us gamers, they know we don't care about power. So they're gonna throw G6X chips on there that pull 100 watts by themselves. And here we are today. Now, with that being said, this content could not be brought to you without the supporters of the channel. They give me money every month so that I can buy cool shit like this to review for you guys. And that includes also legacy hardware. When we finished the Titan Volta benchmarks, it turned out that card was much better suited for workstation tasks than it was gaming tasks. Let's go find out if this is the same story with the Radeon 7. 
Who's the happiest kitty? My kitty's the happiest kitty. Right, kitty? Who's the happiest kitty? Okay, so I set up the card on its own kind of self-contained AIO type thing here with a 360 mil radiator. Um, just so I can move it in and out of uh, test benches quickly, right? I don't want to actually attach it permanently. I doubt it'll perform well enough to leave inside of a rig. I'll probably relegate it over to some kind of mining task in the long run, but we're going to put this on a 12900K test bench. Just slot it with a riser cable, and then, uh, yeah, let's go around some benchies. One thing I actually forgot to mention was I love single card or single slot cards like this you know like i'm just i'm so sick and tired of this, of this quad slot shit you know what i mean i just want a water block and i just want one slot and i want it to take up as little space as possible okay so we're up and running here i got it in this this mess of a pc here um we got radeon 7 bus width 496 bit bandwidth yeah one terabyte of bandwidth right uh we haven't even overclocked yet hbm2 uh we used more power tool and the vega 20 rom here to remove the power limit and uh let's see what she can do now this is the interesting thing here the radeon 7 technically does not support resizable bar um doesn't make any sense i don't really understand the they must have been testing this for um for big navi and then they kind of just didn't support it for radeon 7 so i don't know if this actually does anything but it, it is detecting it is on so that is super interesting i'm gonna leave it on just just for why not okay we're just running heaven in the background here i'm trying to find what the max core clock is on this one here yeah it's quite efficient right we're running uh one 1275 millivolts and it's only pulling less than 300 watts right junction seems kind of high which is odd but uh if we go 2250 apply right now it's kind of starting to artifact a little bit in the back here i'm not sure yeah you see you see the you see the artifacting at the um, 2150 so we're gonna stick with 2100 for the gaming benchmarks here just to make sure it's 100 oh i think it just crashed yeah so we're gonna do 2100 here okay so you remember how i was saying the driver is completely broken right so check this out so if we open radeon software here if you're supposed to set all three of these clock speeds to the exact same it doesn't actually work if you set the first one above 1800 like this we'll do 1850 whatever apply right we go back the clock speed will always show 700 megahertz here no matter what now if you go back to 1800 right 1800 it will always show 1700 always doesn't matter so what you actually have to and if you run the benchmark it'll do the exact same thing so what you have to actually do to get around this bug in the driver you have to actually go to afterburner and you have to set two profiles here and they're just one megahertz apart right so profile one here is 2203 profile two is 2204 and you actually bind these two profiles to two different hotkeys on the keyboard. So when you're actually in the game, right, we'll get to 1700. Now you just mash the hotkeys one at a time until it applies one of the profiles. There it is. See, now we're at 2100. Isn't AMD drivers, baby, AMD drivers. Now we can actually benchmark this properly. So anyone who has a Radeon 7, that's the that's the workaround that I found how to do this to actually make it apply the clocks in the game. I don't know if there's another way to do it, but anything through the actual Radeon software is a joke. See, now we're actually running the benchmark at the proper clock speed, around that 2100 mark. I might bump it up a little bit here. Seems to be down clocking a little bit, but... Um, that's how you have to benchmark this card. All right, so with that out of the way, 
I'm gonna go do some benchmarks and then let's go check out the graphs after. Okay, first up, we're gonna get straight into Tomb Raider here. Now you can see that the 2080 Super and 6700 XT they do beat the Radeon 7 here by quite a bit. We have a 12% lead for the 2080 Super on average, and then a 23% lead on the 6700 XT over the Radeon 7. Now, all of these graphics cards are within that $400, you know, $300 to $400 range. So in this scenario for single player games, the best bang for buck here is going to be that 6700 XT for these single player AAA titles. Always remember on the Frame Chasers channel that the graphics cards are at max overclocks with power limits removed. Okay, Horizon Zero Dawn up next, the ultimate console port. Now, yeah, you can just see right away, the 6700 XT blows the other two cards completely out of the water. I I'm surprised that it actually blew the Radeon 7 out of the water that much. This game is known to be an AMD-optimized title, but I guess not so much for the Radeon architecture, right? So the 2080 Super here has about a 10% on average victory and then the 6700 xt has a 40 percent 40 percent victory on average so it by no means should you be buying a radeon 7 for that for anywhere near this price i'm really starting to like this 6700 xt as kind of the uh single player triple a budget goat graphics card Sure, it doesn't have ray tracing or, you know, the NVENC encode or any of the features or anything, but, I mean, if you're playing just, you know, Timmy and you're just playing games, it's a pretty good card, man. If you check out the 4K numbers, though, they do tighten up a lot, so the 6700 XT is definitely not a 4K card. It doesn't have enough infinity cache or bandwidth to be able to handle it. So stick, stick to 1440p or lower if you're going to be getting this tier of card. Okay, Stray is up next, my favorite game of 2022. Now, the NVIDIA card it does take the win on all the resolutions here for this game. And you're going to see that, you know, for B-grade studios tend to work better with the NVIDIA cards. NVIDIA just has more resources, and most indie developers and B-tier developers will code for NVIDIA cards just because there's a, a larger market share for sales for the uh, NVIDIA cards, right? So it doesn't mean AMD does poorly. It just means that for maximum compatibility, NVIDIA will always be the better choice, right? That being said, you're going to have a great gaming experience in all these cards, but I mean, if you're paying that much money, the NVIDIA card has a 44% victory, and then the 6700 XT has a 34% victory, so yeah, yeah, don't get the Radeon 7. Okay, so for Cyberpunk 2077, I only did the two resolutions here because you can see that in 1080p, uh, this was 1080p medium, by the way, not even high. It only did 40 FPS in the lows. No FSR, no DLSS, no ray tracing, nothing. Just standard bone stock 1080p medium. So I deem this to be actually unplayable on the Radeon 7, which actually makes no sense because that card should... Come on, man, like, like 1080p, 40 FPS, right? So this is just that example that I was talking about earlier about how AMD did not continue to support the GCN architecture with future driver updates. So even though this card, by all rights, is a very, very powerful card, it just won't be supported going forward with future titles. All right, Warzone is up next. We'll start with the 1080p results here. Now, right off the bat, I legit thought that AMD fixed their driver with the 6700 XT. And nope, there's the dip. Now look at the 1% lows of the other two cards. They did not dip. Now to AMD's credit, a 160 FPS dip, 
Uh, it's about 40 FPS better than it used to be. The 6700 XT used to dip down to about 120. Same with the 6900 XT. But check out the Radeon 7 here, man. This is hilarious. AMD legit got beaten by themselves. All right, let's bring up the graphs here. And honestly, when it comes to the RDNA 2 architecture here, and just, you know, all the AMD architectures in general, I honestly hate what AMD did here. Like, look, look at how ridiculously high the average is on the 6700 XT. That thing is well above 300 FPS the entire time, and it feels like absolute trash. Look, look, there shouldn't be that large of a gap between average and 1% low ever, not in a million years. And the Radeon 7 actually wins on both resolutions on both cards too like this is this is insane and just to drive this point home let's go get the 6900 xt the 6900 xt honestly is an absolute dumpster fire of a graphics card it has the same lows as a 6700 xt in this game a four year old vega gcn architecture graphics card is completely blowing a 6900 XT out of the water. What do you even feel if you're an AMD fanboy? It's still an AMD graphics card, but you just bought the wrong one. Also, ignore the weird color on the uh, Radeon 7 recording. It was a bug in the driver. It's something to do with the HDR and the capture card and not syncing up. I couldn't turn the HDR off for some reason. I don't know, just... Whatever, it looks normal when you actually play on a monitor. It's just a capture card AMD driver. Another, another AMD driver problem. So AMD fanboys, there is a graphics card that you can buy that works well in Warzone. This is probably how you feel right now. I have the weirdest boner. Well, that's it. So very similar results to the titan volta kind of very 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 good for work mining number crunching that type of work but for gaming vega was kind of a dog compared to modern architectures i want to say the gcn architecture at the time was designed by amd because they were kind of broke right so they needed an architecture that worked for good enough for gaming and then good enough for workstation right fast forward to now it's really interesting because amd has rdna which is the gaming specific one and then now they have cdna which is the compute workstation specific one so now amd has taken that and split it into two different product lines whereas nvidia oddly enough has gone the gcn route where now they have ampere which is mainly focused on compute and they somehow managed to just kind of do a better job. It's almost as if NVIDIA added the ray tracing cores and the tensor cores for the professionals. And then they were kind of like, how can we sell this to gamers? Neither method is wrong or right, whether you want to make two different architectures or one big one. Again, neither is wrong or right. It just depends on all we care about as gamers is what's the performance and the performance with vega was always kind of meh anyway guys if you like the content hit that subscribe button do all that youtube seo stuff like share subscribe comment down below what you think of the radeon 7 and i will see you guys in the next one talk to you later